Yeah, I'm Gus Bell, Scottish Regional Chair. I'm here with John McKenzie, uh, Scottish Regional Secretary. Morning, John. It's uh, been a busy few weeks. Do you want to give the members a bit of an update on the, the campaigns that have been running across the country over, uh, over the last two or three weeks? Aye, so we've seen a lot of really good local campaigns kick off. We always had the announcement about uh, the cuts that were outlined at the end of May. And over the course of the last month, you, I, other regional officials, the uh, EC member have attended a range of branch meetings at the affected branches and at other branches. There's a real sense of, of anger amongst members. And we've, we've also seen a, a, some really good political campaigning outside local council meetings, scrutiny meetings, etc. So, yeah, there's really good local campaigns building. Incredibly important that members get right behind their branch reps at these stations, get fully engaged as a responsibility upon all our members, not just the members that affected workplaces. But yeah, really good steps in the campaign, and we've got lots lined up ahead. Yeah, it's been an excellent and uh, really encouraging response from the majority of the politicians that we've talked to, right? Cross party support, especially, you know, the scrutiny committee meetings and the, uh, and the public meetings have been held that they've had firefighters protesting outside. But there's been a bit of a frustrating, it's been a frustrating response from. The Minister, to say the least. Ah, it's been a really frustrating response from the Minister. It's been a frustrating response from the government. Look, I think one of the things that's been annoying me about uh, this campaign, I'm, I'm not, yeah. we're all getting annoyed, to be honest, is that the Scottish Government have trotted out that there's an additional 14.4, 14.5 million pounds worth of funding given to the service this year. I think it's completely missing the point. It doesn't mean that's not true. But the reality of this is really easy to understand. If 10 years ago, I was paid 50p a week, <laughs> and all I wanted about life was a pint of milk. No, but this is it. This is the simplicity of it, right? If 10 years ago I was paid 50p a week and all I wanted that week was a pint of milk and the pint of milk cost me 50p, I'm happy. Now, I might get paid 70 pence. You pay me 20 pence more a week. I think life's great. Everything's going grand. See if that pint of milk costs you 80 pence or 90 pence or a pound. It's no use to me. And this is exactly the argument with the Scottish Government. Since 2012, 2013, we've had 57 million quid 57 million quid of real terms funding stripped out of the service. They've only got a resource budget, 308 million. 57 million quid's a fortune out there. And that's what's led to 1,100 firefighter jobs being cut since 2012, 2013. That's what's going to lead. And the chief officer sat in front of the, uh, the committee last year, last October, just before our demonstration, said worst case projections are getting up towards 800 jobs, 780 jobs. They said potentially 30 fire appliances. Again, that's real terms cuts. So, Yes, are the government right to trot out there is additional funding this year? Yes. The simple bit is, is the money you're funding the fire and rescue services at the time, 2012 to 2013, more or less than now? It's considerably less, and it's 57 million quid less. So the government needs to show a bit of accountability for, for this. They need to recognise that it's stripped funding out of the fire and rescue service in Scotland for a decade now, and these are the consequences to it, and it's no good enough. So a wee bit of political honesty is needing to happen. And I think a lot of our direction, our campaign is going to have to focus on that. Uh, and it certainly will do in the months ahead. Yeah, it's uh, there's a kind of deafening silence around the, the fact that nobody's saying that if you have less firefighters, that has an obvious impact on firefighter and public safety. We keep hearing that there'll be no impact. How you can have two fire engines turning out just now from a station, and after September, having one fire engine turning from our station and somehow there's no increase in the risk to the public and to our members is, is beyond me. You, people, firefighters resolve operational incidents. Firefighters train other firefighters to resolve operational incidents. You need firefighters to answer calls from the public to alert them emergency incidents. You need firefighters to go out and do community safety activities to keep the community safe, see some of the really successful work that's gone on over the last 20 years in, in fire reduction, other hazard reduction. We've cut 1,100 firefighters since 2013. We're talking about cutting potentially numbers that would get us up towards 2,000 since 2013. You're going to be less safe. Communities and firefighters are going to be less safe with less firefighters. What these firefighters do, it's a totally different conversation. But numbers of people, numbers of resources, particularly in the fire and rescue service, and let's be totally honest, incidents like wildfires at Canic are labour intensive. If you think of the jobs you and I have been to, many of our members have been to, certainly for the time of the last 20 years, these are labour intensive jobs. You can only resolve them with firefighters, irrespective of where they are, duty officers, wherever they are in the structure. Cutting people doesn't make you more safe, it makes you less safe. 
and you need the money to pay for the people. It's pretty straightforward. So I couldn't I couldn't agree with you more. And that's something that's going to be like a really key message throughout this campaign. And that's the real political responsibility here is is the Scottish government comfortable in overseeing a project, Scottish Fire and Rescue Service, where you just have a complete and utter slashing of the number of, of the amount of resources that's here and the resources firefighters. So aye got to be a key focus of the campaign. It has been so far, and we're only in the early stages here. And, and yeah. of those early stages, a uh, survey that members have been undertaking for the past week and are due to undertake, that's going to be a key part of what we've got going on this time. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, on, on the previous point, the, the government and the service have to decide what kind of fire service they want to have. They want to have a truly, we keep hearing the word modern, they want to have, you know, an efficient, modern fire service. An efficient modern fire service isn't where we're headed at the moment. But no, there's on the survey, absolutely. We've got a we've had a great response so far. Uh, the people who are watching us are probably people who've already filled it out. What we want is those people to sit at their mess tables. We've sat at plenty of mess tables, John. Firefighters have all got uh, all got an opinion on the direction of the fire service and things that are going wrong. Uh, or the things that are going well. That's what we need to hear. So please sit with your mates. Make sure they've done it. If they've not done it, sit over their shoulders. Get your voices heard. It's really, really important. This is how we present what's going on just now to the politicians and by extension to the public. The reason we had the successes that we had in the pay campaign, and by successes, I mean moving the government and, and the fire and rescue services significantly over an eight-month period, irrespective of what opinions are on, on the outcome of that. But significant successes in moving it was member engagement. Huge numbers of members, overwhelming majority of members taking part in ballots, casting united positions in ballots, preparedness to take industrial action should they not get a settlement that they saw fit. Same thing here. Same thing here. Firefighters have to make their voices heard in terms of both participating in the survey, attending their branch meetings, lobbying local local scrutiny meetings and council meetings. And the, the sort of culmination, or not culmination of that, but the culmination of that over the summer, let's put it is going to be a rally that we've got in George Square in Glasgow on the 24th of August. Our expectation is we would see a minimum of 1,000 firefighters there in their tunics, making their voices heard about the cuts. Not just the cuts that have been outlined at these yeah. specific 13 workplaces, but one, the decade of cuts that we've seen happen to the service. And also, as the Chief Fire Officer has outlined, unless the Scottish Government start taking the funding of the Scottish Fire Rescue Service seriously, and I absolutely do not consider that they are doing that just now, then we're going to see significantly greater cuts in the future. So the rally on the 24th is going to be a really significant event for us, isn't it? Yeah, 24th of August, George Square from 1 till 2, uh, we'll be putting out information around travel and other rest of the arrangements over the next few weeks. Yeah, uh, there'll be an all-member circle that'll go out, hopefully within the course of the early part of next week, and there'll be more information to members. But members need to book that date in their diary. 24th of August, 1 o'clock, George Square, be there. We'll be laying on, like you said, transport, everything else that's required, but it's a pivotal date for members' diaries. Yeah, if you're not on duty, you should be in George Square, 24th August.